Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 174 in the series of basic math and today we'll have our third lesson, third video in the series of seven videos on the topic of unit digit. The problem that you see on the blackboard is the one from the yesterday. Today we are going to do a few more problems very similar to the what we what we did yesterday and what we did day before yesterday. If you have not watched day 173 and day 172, make sure you pause this video immediately, stop this video right now, watch yesterday's video and the one day before yesterday's one. Always make sure that you watch all of these videos in the proper sequence because I take it for granted that you understand the concept that we have already covered. Obviously we do not have a luxury of repeating the same thing over and over again. So make sure you watch yes that you watch yesterday's video and that you have watched day before yesterday's video. As I said, day number 173 and 172. Now, here's the problem. It says which of the following could be the unit digit of could be the unit digit of which of the following which of the following could be the unit digit of so 32 raised to n and n we are told is positive. It's a positive exponent. Here are the answer choices A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and J. As you can see, listen very carefully please. As you can see, there are 10 answer choices. This is not what we see typically in ACT, SAT, TEs, or GMAT. But on the GRE, especially if you're preparing for GRE, on the GRE there is one type of questions where they give you more than 5 answer choices, 6, 7, 8, sometimes as many as 10 answer choices. And our job is to mark all the answer choices that apply. That apply. Do you understand? So here we'll have 10 answer choices. The answer choices are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There we go. And the question simply is which of the following could be the unit digit of 32 raised to n? Let's find out. For example, for example, yesterday we learned that 37 raised to n, 37 raised to n can end in a 7 or a 9 or a 3 or a 1. So instead of, instead of 32, had it been 37 here, the answer would have been everything, 1, 3, 9, 7, except the 5. So we'll have 1, 3, 7, and 9. There are 4 right answers. There, there would have been 4 correct answer choices out of 10. Let's see what we find for 2 raised to n. 2 raised to n, well, let's find out. 32, 32 raised to 32 raised to n, obviously, 32 raised to 1 will end in a 1, obviously, or will end in a 2. 32, 32 raised to 1, 32 raised to 1 is just 32, it will end in a 2. So that works. If you were to multiply that quantity, that quantity 32, by one more 32, that will give us 32 squared. 32 squared, we don't have to waste our time trying to figure out what that is, all we are interested in in the unit digit. 32 times 32 should end in a 4, should end in a 4. We take multiply that by one more 32 and we end up with 33, 33. We'll end up with 32 raised to 3 and that quantity should end in a 4 times 2 which is 8. It will end in an 8. Let's multiply one more time 32 and 32 raised to 4 as we can clearly see. We do not know what 32 raised to 4 is but whatever it is it has to end in a 8 times 2, 8 to the 16, it will end in a 6. Let's try one more 32, multiply by 32 one more time, and we'll end up with 32 raised to 5, and 32 raised to 5 will end up in a 6 times 2, which is 6 to the 12, will end in a 12, will end in a 12. As soon as you hit, as soon as you hit 2, which is our starting point, you know, the cycle is going to repeat, the cycle is going to repeat. That's the 2 right there. 2 times 2 again is going to be 4, 4 times 2 is going to be 8, 8 times 2 is going to be 16. The cycle will keep repeating. So what's the cycle here? The cycle here is, the cycle here is 2, 4, 8, and 6. Now what's the significance of knowing the knowing this sequence? 2, 4, it's not, it's not 2, it is not, it is not 2, 4, 6, 8, it is 2, 4, 8, 6. Why is that significant? Well, I'll show you that in a second. So 6 is also possible. So we'll have 2, 4, 6, 8. 2, 4, 6, 8. It has 4 answer choices. 
My question is why is that important? Why is it significant that we understand that it is 2, 4, 8, 6 and not 2, 4, 6, 8? I'll show you in a second. Now I'm going to give you a different question, a different problem. Now the question is, let's do it here. Here's a new question. What is the what is the unit digit unit digit of 32 raised to 32 raised to let's make it 103. What's the unit digit of 32 raised to 103? Well, 103. 103 is made up of 100 plus the 3. 100 divided by 4 is going to give us 25, 25 complete cycles. We will have 25 complete cycles. 2, 4, 8, 6, 2, 4, 8, 6, 2, 4, 8, 6, 2, 4, 8, 6, 25 times. We will have 25 complete cycles. We have 3 more to go. We have 3 more to go, which is where the sequence comes into play. So this is where the sequence comes, to, uh, comes into play. We have 3 more to go. So here is the, here's the first, second, and third. It will end in a. It will end in an eight. What? Thirty-two raised to one hundred and three will end in an eight, not a six. Thirty-two raised to one hundred and four would have ended in four six. Then we would have complete cycle. Would have, we would have had twenty-six complete cycles. Here we have twenty-five complete cycles and three more to go. Do you understand? Let's do one more. I'm taking too long here. Let's do one more problem. Let's do one more problem. What's the unit digit of? What's the unit digit of what's the unit digit of 43 43 raised to n 43 raised to n I'm not going to do it because we did it yesterday we did it on day number 173 how about what's the unit digit of 74 raised to n Let's do 74 raised to n, shall we? Let's do 74 raised to n. The answer choices are again same as before. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and J. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. What do you suppose, what do you suppose 74 raised to n can end in? It's very simple. We just start out. 74 raised to first power is just 74. It will end in a 4. 74 times 74 which is 74 squared, 74 squared should end in a 4 times 4, which is 16, it will end in a 6. And then we multiply it by 4 one more, 74 one more time, 73, 73 cubed, or the 74 cubed, 74 cubed will end in a 6 times 4, 6 4s are 24, will end in a 4, it will end in a 4. You see, it ends in a 4, we are back to where we started. So here, here the series is very simple. The series here, the series here is 4, 6, 4, 6, 4, 6. So that's it. 4 and 6. That's the only thing. What's the unit digit of what's the unit digit of 43 raised to 43 raised to 25? Well it's very simple. It's just 4, 4, 6, 4, 6, 4, 6. 25 will have 25 is made up of 25 is made up of 24 plus 25 is made up of 24, 24 plus 1, 24 will have complete cycles, we'll have 12 complete cycles, and since we have 25, it will end in a, it will end in a 1, it will end in a, or rather not 1, it will end in a 4, it, it, will, it will end in a 4, because we have 4, 6, 4, 6, 4, 6, so if the question was, what's the unit digit of 43 raised to 25, the answer is 4, let's do next one, so we did 2, we did 3, we did yesterday, there is the 4, Let's do the next one. Fifty-seven. Let's do the next one. Sixty-five raised to n. Sixty-five raised to n, or for that matter, seven thousand four hundred four thousand seven hundred sixty-five raised to n. Anything that has that has a unit digit of five will will always will always end in 5. So this is not something you're going to see in the exam because it's very simple. It will always end in 5. Let's do 6. Let's do 6. How about uh, 96 raised to n? 96 raised to n or for that matter 
396 raised to n or for that matter 7396 uh, raised to n or for that matter 47396 raised to n it will always if some if you if the unit digits is n this quantity will always will always and in six try it out yourself because you're just going because each time you're going six times six each time you're multiplying times times six times six times six because they always end in the six this number multiplied by itself will be six times six the unit digit will be six again and one more time it's going to be six times six six times six will always end in a six so this is not something that will qualify as a good question for the exam because it only ends in a six let's do one more about 37, 37 raised to n, 37 raised to n, also we did it on either day 173 or 172, I'm not sure, but I know, I know we did number, I, I, I know we did our number ending with a unit digit of 7, let's move on, how about 108 raised to n, 100 raised to, 108 raised to n, let's find out, shall we? Well, let's not make it such a large number. Let's make it. Let's make it 18 raised to n. How about that? So that's to be 18. That's the first power. It ends in an 8. It will end in an 8. Times 18. That's 18 squared. 18 squared will end in a 8. 8 is 64. It will end in a 4. It will end in a 4. And then multiply it by 18 one more time. That will be 18 cubed. And 18 cubed should end in a 4, 8 is 32, it will end in a 2. Multiply by 18 one more time, and we end up with 18 raised to 4, and that should end in a 2 times 8, 2 8 is 16, it will end in a 6. It will still be a 6, we started out with 8, we need, to, we need to see a pattern. Multiply by 18 one more time, that's 18 raised to 5, and that is 8, 8 6 of 48, 8 6 of 48, oh, there you go, 8 6 of 48, there you go, that's where the pattern repeats. The pattern will repeat, it cannot go on forever and it will repeat very fast actually. You just have to figure out what the pattern is. So here the pattern is 8, 4, 2, 8, 4, 2, 6, 8, 4, 4, 8, 4, 8, 4, 2, 6, 8, 4, 2, 6, 8, 4, 2, 6, so on and so forth. 8, 4, 2, 6, so on and so forth. Now let's do one more question, shall we? Here's a, here's a new question. What is the unit digit of and now it gets to be too simple it's become, it becomes repetitive there is no suspense in it what's the unit digit of 18 raised to 18 raised to make up a number here how about 18 raised to 18 raised to 25 or 18 raised to 250 if you like 18 raised to 250 let's do this shall we What's the unit digit of 18 raised to 250? When people see something like this with a huge number as an exponent, of course they freak out. They freak out because they don't know what to do with it. This is a huge number. We're not going to obviously sit there and evaluate the number, obviously. That'll be silly. That'll be, that will, that's not the point here, obviously, even if you could do it. The fact that we can't do it here is a moot point, but anyway. So what do we do here? Well, we have to figure out first the pattern. That work is already done. We just did that work. The pattern is this. 8, 4, 2, 6. 8, 4, 2, 6. The series has the cycle has four beads in it. It says four, it's made up of four beads. So now we take our 250, we take our 250 and divide by four. Take our 250 and divide by four. Let's, okay, pay attention here. How many four does two have? How many four does two have? How many four does two have? Two has no fours. Two has no fours. That two goes and joins the five, becomes 25. How many fours does 25 have? 25 has 6 fours. 6 fours are 24. 6 fours are 24. The remaining one goes and joins the 0 becomes a 10. Let's just one more time. The remaining one goes and joins the 0 becomes 10. How many fours does 10 have? 10 has 2 fours. 10 has 2 fours with the remainder of 2. In other words, in other words, if if we were asked what's the unit digit of 18 raised to 250, we have to immediately realize that 18 raised to 250 will have 62 complete cycles. We will have 62 complete cycles and we have two more to go. We have two more to go. Well, if we have two more to go, then we'll have 62 complete cycles and then we have two more to go. That's the first one, eight, and then there you go, voila, it, it will end in a four. It will end in a four. What's the unit digit of 18 raised to 250? The answer is, the answer is, 
18 raised to 250, 18 raised to 250 will end in a 4. It will end in a 4 because the cycle is this, 8, 4, 2, 6, 8, 4, 2, 6 and so forth. And we'll have 62 complete cycle in 250, we'll have 2 more to go, 8 and 4. Hence the significance of knowing the sequence properly. You cannot simply say 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. It's not 2, 4, 6, 8. It is 8, 4, 2, 6, 8, 4, 2, 6, 8, 4, 2, 6. Do you understand? So we did the 8, let's do finally 9, I'm taking too long here, let's do the very last one so that we can, so that we can say that we covered all the digits. How about, how about uh, 39, 39 raised to n. Question is, what's the unit digit? What, what, could, what could be the, what could be, which of the following could be the unit digit of 39 raised to n? 39 raised to n, and the answer choice is the same as before. Here are the answer choices, 10 answer choices, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Those are the 10 answer choices. Question is, what could be the unit digit of 39 raised to n? Let's find out. 39 raised to 1 is just 39. 39 raised to 1 is just 39. It ends in a 9. Multiply by one more 39, and we get 39 squared. 39 squared will end in a 9, 9, 81. 9, 9, 81, it will end in a 1. If you were to multiply that by 39 one more time, the 39 cube, as soon as we get a 1, that's your cube. Either you get a 1 or you get the same digit that you started out with. Because when you get a 1, you multiply by 39, you're doing the same thing. 1 times 9 is going to be 9. You're going to end up with where we started. So what's the sequence here? If a number ends in a 9, no matter how large the number is, if it ends in a 9, the sequence is very simple. Sequence simply is 9, 1, 9, 1, 9, 1, 9, 1, 9, 1, 9, 1, 9, 1 so on and so forth. That's all. That's all it is. So what's the unit digit of, what's the unit digit of, what's the unit digit of 39 raised to 39? Well, it's very simple. Had it been 38, had it been 38, we would have had a complete cycle because the cycle consists of two beats. It's 39. Since it's 39, it's going to end in a 9. That's all. It will end in a 9. The answer is, it will end in a 9. The unit digit the unit digit of 39 raised to 9 is 9. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.